I didn't find out that Tony died till Monday, and uh, so I've actually been uh, uh, been working hard on my film. But I've, I've been, I went home and I watched. True, I had screened True Romance uh, on Monday and watched it, and got, uh, came home on Tuesday and watched Man on Fire, cried all the way through it, and uh, listened to part of the, the DVD commentary. Uh, I was doing too much work on Wednesday, but on Thursday I went home and screened my print of uh, Days of Thunder. So one of the things that started cracking me up and thinking about this is, uh, I think the biggest. Thing about a writer working with Tony Scott as a visual director, if he likes the script, <laughs> you know, if he doesn't think it's fucked up and he needs to hire a zillion guys to fix it, uh, if he's confident with the material and confident with the dialogue and confident with the characters, then what he's going to do is just add these almost ridiculous visual elements. To it that are not on the page, they're not in anyone's brain other than his, and uh, they actually would sound ridiculous if he were to just explain them to you beforehand. I mean, like for instance, in, in True Romance, when he went to see Dressel and had his little standoff, his Charles Bronson standoff with Dressel, um, you know, he went to Dressel's house. In my script, which was sort of a, a house in Cass Quarter, Detroit, uh, but maybe like a, an abandoned uh, hotel that he, he bought or, or something. It, it, but it's a house. Uh, it's his home. It's not like a, you know, it's not with whatever that is. I don't know what that is. I still haven't figured it out. Is it a whorehouse? Is it a club? There seems to be about 30 people there, all girls, but people are soliciting people outside. Uh, can you just knock on the door and get in? I mean, you know, uh, and go figure, when I wrote it, I didn't write nine fish tanks skanked up to the, from floor to ceiling. But at, at Drexel's, though, it's, it's another interesting point about just his directing style in which you had the perfect drama, but he took something as harmless as a swinging light mm -hmm. yeah. and turned it dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And that was beautiful. But, now, uh, then, but that's also a really great example of... Um, that swinging light is actually something, I think, a great example of cinema. Because there's no reason you should have a lamp that big it looks like on it was a, a chain that long. I always thought it was for a pool table yeah, or something. I, in a room that actually appears to have high ceilings. So, it, so you can just light your food? <laughs> On a coffee table that's up to his knees. <laughs> but I don't ask those stupid questions when I'm watching it. And you should. I mean, I mean, it just happens to be down there where Clarence falls and Dretzel's dry humping him. It just happens to be right there. And I don't ask the questions. That's cinema. It works. And when it works, it works. So you don't need fucking to explain anything. <laughs>